After defeating the Celestial Pillars, it was only a matter of time before the Moon Lord would arrive. In the calm before the battle, Magnus started to feel the gravity of the situation. He had actually invited the legendary Moon Lord to his world. Magnus knew that there was no going back. Even if he could defeat the Moon Lord, he would now be a target for even more powerful entities. This was a chilling thought, but Magnus knew that at this point, gaining power was his best chance to save his friends. If he could obtain magic more powerful than Supreme Calamitous, then surely Magnus could reverse the spell that binds his friends to the Netherrealm. Magnus had overcome so much, and he wasn't going to let the Moon Lord stand in his way now. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Magnus the Mage episode. We are doing a Calamity playthrough on death mode using only magic weapons. Last episode, we defeated Astrum Diaz and Duke Fishron, and we cleared some more of the pillars. I also cleared out the solar pillar and started fighting the Moon Lord, and I was filming it and everything, but it ended up glitching. And you know how it kind of creates that weird like blur effect before fighting the Moon Lord? That blur effect was going on through the fight, and it made it so laggy that I just quit out of the game because it wasn't really usable footage. So we don't have any pillars still open because I finished off that solar pillar, but I did craft a summon for the Moon Lord, and let me go grab that. Here it is. It is an instant Moon Lord summon, and that's added with the Louis AFK mod. And so that should make sure that we avoid getting that blur effect that was causing so much lag. So I'm really hoping we don't have a laggy fight against the Moon Lord this time. Now it's time to go face the Moon Lord. What I've done is create a little platform. I think that's going to be a pretty good arena. I put it close to the ground so we've got plenty of space to jump and dodge the lasers and not hit planetoids. Well, I think it is time to go. Let's get the Moon Lord summoned. And as you can see, it summons right away. And it doesn't seem to be lagging this time, which is amazing. So we just need to kite the Moon Lord and take care to not get hit by the laser. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. I need to get better. Because you can kind of time that laser. Okay, I'm just going to wait for the laser now. There we go. And back to D DPS. Oh, we have adrenaline. Perfect. And we should have a laser coming up soon. Yep, there we go. Oh no, I thought we could outrun it. Oh well, we're still avoiding enough damage to keep this fight going pretty long. And we're probably getting pretty close to a laser again. So I'll just leave it on Rada Discord, switch back. And that gives us time to build up some adrenaline and to get our magic back. And we're probably getting pretty close to another laser. Okay, this one we should be able to dodge. So we're doing pretty good here. It's much easier to dodge his attacks if you're running side to side. Okay, we'll dodge that, no problem. Okay, well, I guess we could just wait for, I think, his center eye is the main thing that we're waiting on. And there we go. If you kind of stand above it, it's easy to dodge one side or the other. I think, yeah, both hands are done, so we just need to wait for the eye to open up. There we go. And we'll dodge it, knock this eye out as much as possible. 
And now we just need to wait for the eye to open again. So one thing I've noticed is that the eye seems to open before it does its attack. Like this. So we'll probably get the laser soon. Hopefully the eye is almost done. Now we just need to wait, hopefully dodge all of our attacks so we can get adrenaline and take out the eye next time it spawns. There we go. Oh no. <laughs> I was the wrong position. Okay, let's go around. Hopefully recharge some health here. I think the eye might be opening soon. Yep. There we go. Ooh. This is like an endurance boss. Okay, the eye should be opening now, and we should be able to knock it out. Yep, now we're to the heart. So this should be pretty simple now. We're probably getting pretty close to the eye laser. Ooh, we're getting a lot of damage here. Okay, we'll do another heal. I think we're probably getting a laser soon. Discord through that. Oh man, what are we getting hit by here? Taking so many hits. Okay, we're gonna have the eye soon. Discord. Get in the hang of this. Okay, we'll easily dodge that. We might even get some adrenaline here in a sec if we can avoid another... There we go. And I think he's gonna do laser soon. Yeah, once when you get the, like, the timing down, it makes this fight much easier. When you kind of just have a feel for when he's gonna do the laser. There we go. And we got him. Technically our second attempt, but the first attempt I didn't even die. I just quit out because it was lagging so hard. So yeah, that's kind of like our first attempt there. And now we have new mobs. We've got these Scorn Eaters that drop Unholy Essence. Let's see if we got some lore. Yep, we got Moon Lord lore. It says, place in your inventory to gain an improved gravity globe that gives you an increase to all stats while upside down. However, while not upside down, you have permanent feather fall. Interesting. Oh, that's what we see right here, is the feather fall. Let's see what we've got with our treasure bag. We got a bunch of luminite, awesome. And we have the celestial onion. I'm so excited. This adds our seventh accessory slot and our final one. We just opened up another accessory slot right there. And I am so happy about that. We also got a suspicious looking tentacle which calls upon a suspicious looking eye to provide light. Interesting, I think it's better than our wisp in a bottle. Now that we've defeated the Moon Lord, we have so much stuff we can craft. We can craft our Seraph Tracers. It combines our wings with our boots, and it is such a cool accessory. It also has really good acceleration multiplier and horizontal speed. So this is incredible. It's like giving us another accessory slot as well. So with Luminite, we have a bunch of upgrades that we can do. So we just need to kind of look through it. We can craft the exotic pheromones. Before we start crafting, I saw that we can upgrade our Terra Ray, but I wanted to craft another Night Ray. So we've got some of the ingredients right here. They're really easy to get. You can actually buy two of them. And so let's craft a new Night Ray so we can craft it into a Terra Ray. And that way we can mount it right here because I feel like we need to make a little memorial for how awesome it was. So now we just upgrade to the Terra Ray. 
I just added the terror ray that I crafted to the little item frame there. So now it represents the different stages of the game. The first was the fungus rod, and then we had the relic of ruin, and then the terror ray for the second half of hard mode. And honestly, those are kind of the best weapons at each stage of the game, in my opinion. And now we can upgrade our terror ray to something even better, and it is the elemental ray. It just requires Galactica Singularities, Luminite, and the Terror Ray. And there we go. I have a feeling this is going to be, like, one of my favorite weapons. <laughs> it looks so cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. And we could probably unequip a lot of our weapons now. Because I have a feeling we are going to be replacing pretty much all of those. So the next is this Meteor Staff, which is a vanilla item. And we can combine that with Luminite to create the Asteroid Staff. Interesting, the Asteroid Staff looks pretty powerful. The next thing I want to craft is an upgrade to the Razor Blade Typhoon and the Poseidon spell. It just requires Unicorn Horn, Souls of Sight, and Luminite in addition. And it creates the Nuclear Fury. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this looks insane. And it goes through walls. Wow, that looks so good. I know when I buy treasure bags, it can sometimes pain some of you guys, but we do have 19 platinum. So I'm just going to buy two more Moon Lord treasure bags so we can quickly get some of our spells that we need. Ooh, what is this? We got the infinity. I've never actually seen that weapon before. This next spell I want to craft is the Augur of the Elements. And in order to get that, we need to fight the goblin invasion and we actually haven't done that in hard mode let's get that started so we can get the shadow flame hex doll so that should be pretty quick we've got the goblin army we got a hex flame doll immediately perfect now we can just clear this really quickly in fact let's use nuclear fury wow this is so good well, we're done with that. Now that we have the Shadow Flame Hex doll, we can craft the Augur of the Elements. And there we go. I love how this tier of weapons has like a very rainbow effect. Looks really sweet. Oh, we can even upgrade our Rod of Discord. We're actually going to need Hellstone. So let's go down to the Underworld and get a little bit more Hellstone. Should be pretty quick. There's so many things to craft after defeating the Moon Lord. I always love unlocking a huge new tier of items. Okay, so I think we already have 200 Hellstone, so let's head back to base. Now we can craft Cinder Plate, and now we should be able to craft it the Normality Relocator. So now I have the normality relocator attached to a button so I can easily change my position without having to switch over to a rod of discord. That is so powerful. And then we can upgrade our ion blaster with just 10 luminite bars. And there we go. So the higher the mana, the more damage you do. So it's very similar to the weapon we had before. We can craft the ultra liquidator. And let's see what this does. It summons liquidation blades that summon more blades upon enemy hits. The blades inflict Inkor, Cursed Inferno, Fire, and Frostburn. Interesting. So I think this is kind of like a debuff item. So we are at the edge of our world. And this is where we get the most spawns for Martian Saucers. So let's go stand up here and hopefully we'll get a Martian Saucer spawned pretty quickly. Okay, here we go. We've got our Mar Martian Saucer, and we've got the Martian Invasion event started. And I'll just go through this pretty quickly. Oh my gosh. Now that we're post Moon Lord, we are so much more powerful. Wow. We did just get Wingman. That's going to be good for our spell later. We just need a Martian Saucer to spawn. This is such a cool spell. 
Let's try the different spells out. Ooh, this is pretty good on the saucer. Boom. There we go. And we got a laser machine gun already. Awesome. And this is a little bit more precise. Take this out. And hopefully... No, we got a Xeno Staff. So we still need to do another Martian Saucer. And we can craft the Genesis. And that is just the Laser Machine Gun, Luminite, and Life Alloy. So let's see what this weapon does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how we're going to be able to pick... We've got so many good weapons now. So after farming up the Martian Invasion event a few more times and the Duke Fishron boss, we've got our Bubble Gun and Xenopopper. So we can craft the Effervescence, the upgraded version of these two weapons. And let's see what that does. Whoa! <laughs> it shoots so many bubbles out. That's so cool. Now that we have so many new weapons, let's try these out and see which ones have the highest DPS. The Elemental Ray does a good 8,000 to 9,000. The Nuclear Fury doesn't do that much damage, but the fact that it homes and shoots out in all directions makes it pretty good. So it does about three to 4,000 damage. And the Augur of the Elements, that does, whoa, that does a lot. If you're right up close, you can do 16,000 damage. The Asteroid Staff can do like 17,000 damage there, but more consistently 15. Now let's see what this Apoctosis Array does. It peaked at 20,000, and now the Genesis. I think this one might do better if it's a little bit farther back. There's probably like an optimal position to be. Yeah, like right where it splits. It can do like 13,000. And let's try our Effervescence. So this one does 20,000. What? We've got so many good weapons now. Let's go put these to the test on the boss that is formerly known as Bumbleburb. But now it is the Dragon Folly. So let's summon that and see how it goes. We'll see how hard of a fight this is. Ooh, it's doing some damage. This is a pretty fun fight. I love the new look to this boss. Ooh, the Augur of Elements might be pretty good on this one. Well, that was surprising. We actually just died on the Dragon Folly. Okay, let's give this a try again. I think I underestimated the Dragon Folly. It may have gotten harder, or I just usually don't fight it at this stage of the game. It used to be something that I never really bothered with until after Providence. Okay, this time we are gonna be serious and we use our bubble gun. The next thing I want to do is craft the nebula armor because I'm not sure if it's going to be an upgrade from the astral, but I feel like it's worth trying it out. We have 141 defense with astral and our defense drops by quite a bit down to 124 when we put on nebula, but our damage is at 321 and with, with nebula it goes down as well. The set bonus for nebula is that hurting enemies has a chance to spawn buff boosters pick boosters up to get stacking buffs. Oh, something is approaching. 
Okay, so we got a natural spawn for the Bumbleburb or the Dragon Folly. And this is actually a pretty tricky fight. I don't know if they've changed it recently, but it seems a lot harder than it used to be. I actually have to focus now on this fight. Ooh, those dashes do so much damage. Okay, we're doing tons of damage here. But we just took a lot of damage. Oh no. Seven seconds. We need to survive seven seconds. Okay, there we go. Twenty four seconds. Man, this is a hard boss fight. <laughs> I don't know how I'm having trouble with Bumbleburb. Oh no, that was a silly mistake. Okay, we're doing pretty good now. And there we go, some adrenaline. Do some crazy damage here. I don't really know what these beams of light do, but they can't be good. And here we go. I think we got her. Or it. I don't know really what gender it is. Whew, that was intense. <laughs> Let's make sure we got the lore piece. It's right here. And that was pretty fun. Let's see what we got from the Bumbleburb. We got the feathers. Ooh, they resprited the feathers. Oh, and we got Rogue Slash. Interesting, it's a magic weapon. And then we have a consumable that permanently makes Rage do 15% more damage. And I just realized we had Rage active at the end of that fight, so we could have used that. And let's see what things we can craft with these feathers. So it's part of a lot of the Sylvia stuff. We can also craft the Mad Alchemist's Cocktail Glove. So this is from the Toxic Flask and just a bunch of other stuff that we already have. And here it is, the Mad Alchemist's Cocktail Glove. And let's see what that does. Whoa. <laughs> So each one has a different effect. That's actually really neat. It doesn't look like the Dragon Folly lore actually does anything. It just kind of talks about the Dragon Folly. I think this is a great place to end this episode. We defeated the Moon Lord and the Bumbleburb or Dragon Folly. We also upgraded 10 or 11 weapons this episode. We've got so many new weapons to use on Providence. And that's what we're going to be starting off next episode doing. We'll fight the Profane Guardians and then start trying to defeat Providence in death mode. I have a feeling it's going to be very tricky. 
This has been such a fun series so far, and if you are enjoying this, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.